Hello everyone, welcome to this part of the tutorial of the ESL server system. Today we're going to talk about databases and database connections. Now, if you install the ESL server software with ZAMP, as we did in the installation tutorial, you will have installed a MySQL database running locally on Apache. Now, if you start the ESL server software for the first time, you'll see that it uses a CSV database. I've gone to the data tab in the ESL server software, and you can see here that the database format we're using is CSV, comma separated values. It works just fine, but it's flat text files, and there is no real backup, there are no real transactions, it's all local files on your system, so one data corruption and it's not working anymore. So CSV, while it's working fine for a simple tutorial-based system, is not something that you want to use in production. So instead, we're going to use MySQL. As I said, we use the ZAMP installer to install MySQL on our system. And because of that, we can now surf to the local host, port AT15, the ZAMP installer for ESL server will register port 8015 for Apache and the uh, web application. Slash PHP my admin, which is a embedded piece of uh, database management software. You can also use your own preferred database management software like MySQL Workbench. And what you will want to do is create a new database and we are going to call that ESL. And this database is going to store all of the tables that we use with information on the links, on the products, and everything else. So let's create that database. And there are no tables in there. Well, no problem, because we're going to import a couple of settings. We go to the settings tab, we say we want to import from our examples folder. It automatically opened in the ESL server installation folder. So C slash Opticon slash ESL server. We select examples, MySQL. As you can see, there are also examples for all different kinds of database systems. We're going to import the ESL server.config file and the configuration was successfully imported. We can go to the data tab and say, well, we imported it. We want to connect to the MySQL database. It's running on the local host. The user ID we haven't changed. It's root as user and no password. The database is ESL as we had just created on the database server. We can test the connection and the connection is okay, awesome. So we apply, ooh, and there's an error. The table products doesn't exist. Now that might be caused because it tries to upload a SQL file to our server. And sometimes it will not work as, except, uh, as expected. So what we can do, is manually import the file. So let's go to our local disk, C drive, Opticon, ESL server. Let's go to the examples MySQL page. And this is the actual SQL query that we want to process. So let's copy, go back to this folder and in the input folder, we are going to paste. And as you can see, it was processed automatically. The input folder is a special folder where a file watcher is watching for any changes. So one of the changes that it saw was, ooh, there's a new SQL query to perform. And if we go back to ESL server, well, wouldn't you know it? It created a product database with all of the demo database information. So now we've connected to the demo database that 
uh, is running on a local system with Zump. But you're probably not going to use the ESL server to both host the database and the ESL server. What you probably want to do is connect to an external database uh, engine. So in order to do that, I have installed Microsoft SQL on a different device within the same network. So instead of MySQL, we're going to say it is Microsoft SQL. And there's a reason I chose Microsoft SQL, because there is a little bit of an oddity regarding the use of ports in uh, Microsoft SQL. Usually you place a colon between the IP address and the port that the database is on. Well, not with Microsoft SQL, you need to place a comma there. Just a little heads up for you. So that system uh, that it, the database is running on should be running on 192.168.0.55 on the standard port for MySQL, which is 1433. As with the MySQL database, I kept all the settings the same. So SA is the user ID of the MS SQL database. Its password is admin. And on it is a database running called ESL. So let's test that connection. The connection is OK. We can apply it. And there are a couple of changes. There are new products in our list. The discount is in a different style, and there's a lot of links that already existed in that database. So your ESL server can run on one system, and your database can run on another system, and they'll cooperate just fine. That is the idea of the database system, both locally running and externally running. There are also other database formats, Oracle, SQLite, PostgreSQL, ODBC, the concept is the same. Within the connection field, you tell the ESL server where the server is located, the user ID and password to access the database, and the database name to connect to. There are a couple of other tabs here. By default, we already use the existing ones. Um, so we say the product table is in the ESL database and it's called products. When you connect to a database, it automatically pulls all of the tables that are in there. So we can say, well, no, actually it is all stored in something called uh, server status, just for example. Well, it's not, it's in products. And the same goes for each and every table. ESL server needs the product tables for the product database, the link tables for the link database. Label status uh, is a list with all of the information about ESLs because ESLs give their information to the base station that's also stored in a database table so that when you have any issues, you can look at that status table to see when was the last time it pulled. Could it just be that the batteries ran out? Uh, a user table which is something you use when you're using uh, user authentication, which we will cover in the uh, settings tutorial. Change log and log messages, the base station status, they are all similar to the uh, ESL status tables. They are logging data for uh, uh, issue tracking and uh, issue debugging. And then there's three action tables which are connected to the powered ESL range with uh, active NFC and tapping which we will cover in the tutorial about the PE range labels. Then there are two interesting ones called link staging and product staging. Basically what we want to do is use the ESL server with tens of thousands of products and in order to see whether there are any changes, you can go one of two routes. You can either completely reload everything that's in the product database every couple of minutes, 
But as I said, if you have 10,000 products, that means that every couple of minutes, 10,000s of products are being tossed in the bin and replaced with new ones. That is going to put a large strain on your software system and your network. Because every time it does that, it needs to perform a query, needs to load it all in local memory of the ESL server. You don't want to do that. We use product staging. It has a similar layout as the existing products table, but with another label called delete. And you can place information about uh, a product in that status staging table. And the staging table will be seen as sort of a to-do list. The ESL server will take out any new product information. It will process it. And once it's done processing, which can mean adding a new product, deleting an existing product or updating an existing product, it uh, clears the product staging table and it is done. And that way only one product or as many as the word in the staging table are processed and only once. And that way you can also make it a lot snappier because you can say in the advanced tab how often you want to process those uh, staging tables. So every five seconds, the ESL server will check whether it has something to do and process it immediately. And I want to give you a small example of that. This is the input folder that we used a second ago. And I'm going to create a new screen with one of the uh, queries that I have already prepared. Basically, as I said, it's a query into product staging. It's going to put these fields with this value in there. It's as easy as Control C, Control V. It's been processed. And when we go back to ESL server, the staging table will soon be processed and the sell price will be changed. Oh, there we go. I was just too impatient. So every five seconds, it looks for new information and processes that information and it will automatically update the database. And that way, despite there being 31 products in this product database, only one was changed. And that is the use of product staging tables. Also in the advanced tab, we can change the currency symbol that is being used on the ESLs. We can change the culture information. You can also say that the product table is private, which allows the ESL server to uh, make changes to it. If you have an external database and you don't want to allow the ESL server to change anything in that database, you can say that it is a public product table with a read-only part. What that means for the staging tables is that the staging table is not so much a to-do list, but more of a reminder for the ESL server that there is a change. And instead of processing the uh, staging table, it will read the information in the staging table, see that a product with a certain product ID has been changed, and then it will pull from the product database the new information. And basically, that's all there is to know about databases. As I said, databases come in a variety of forms, and they have a lot of different connection statuses. Uh, they have different syntaxes. If you run into any issues, please feel free to contact Opticon support. There is a link in the description with our contact information. Thank you for watching this tutorial. We hope to see you the other times.